on tonight's show, we have film director of the micro miniseries Pressure, Dejour Ashwood. And now for your host, Cool Park. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Kicking It with Cool Card Show. I am your host, as always, Cool Card. Thank you guys for tuning in. You know I'm at every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here kicking it with someone cool. And tonight, I'm definitely kicking it with someone cool. You might have seen him before. I think he's been on. I think this is his third appearance on the show. Um, but it's worth it, right? It is worth it. I'm telling you, I got a treat for you tonight. Man, you're going to love this. You're definitely going to love it. But I just want to say to anybody who's tuning in for the first time, I invite you to subscribe because we always got some good gems given to you and being dished out on this show by all the wonderful guests that I have on here. And I'm telling you, this brother right here is a wealth of knowledge. He's a film director. He's an actor. He's a writer. He's a producer. He's a photographer. Man, he's a he's an acting coach. The brother does it all, I'm telling you. But tonight we're celebrating the release of his new micro mini series called Pressure, streaming right now on Tubi, soon to be on CW, soon to be on Amazon, soon to be on Netflix, soon to be on everything, Max, all that. I'm telling you, 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 listen, man, I'm gonna stop talking. Goes by the name of Dejo Ashwood. Like I said, you've probably seen him on the show before. I had the brother on here because he's always doing something. You know, so when you got people always doing something and always elevating, you got to be celebrating. So that's what we're doing. We're celebrating this brother. We're celebrating the series, the cast and the crew. Myself, I'd have to say I am honored to be a part of the cast on this wonderful mini series, Man, and it's been doing numbers. It's doing great. The feedback's been great. But I'm going to let you hear it from the horse's mouth. Deja Ashwood, the director, producer. The brother did it all, man. I'm talking camera crew. He, Listen. I'm going to stop talking, but we got a treat for you tonight. Stick around. You won't be sorry. I'm telling you. Let's go, y'all. Deja Ashwood. We kicking it. What was the emergency you had me speeding through traffic for? Brace yourself, babe. Jimmy, where did you get this back? We don't want to hurt you. We just need to know where Jamie is. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, who are they and why are they looking for you? Mom, um, did you go get your check? Did you come over to talk about that? We're losing her. It guesses your exact age. Not just your age, but how long a person lives. Lifespan. Like some psychic reading? I've been to those, they all for it. Then what was so important at home that you would hire a stranger, leave work, and get fired? I lost my job, Jamie. I'm over it! What are you over? Dr. Alexander Bain, Detective Duncan, may I ask you a few questions? If you have any questions for me, you can talk to my lawyer. I'm certain you know his name. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to the show, my brother, Deja Ashwood. Man, 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 it's it's it's, ha it's it's a pleasure to be a part of this establishment. You know, what I'm saying thank you for having me for number third, number three. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, had to have you, brother. You know, I gotta support, man. Anything you doing, you know, I'm bagging it. You know how yeah. we do it, man. It's all love for real. Uh, I just appreciate you, man, for just being the the wealth of knowledge and just the advocate for actors that you man. are. You know what I'm saying? Like genuinely an advocate for actors, and this brother's an actor himself, so that's selfless selflessness. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, come on, man. Like it don't get any better than that. But brother, you know what we got to do? Starting it right. off before we kick it off, we gotta pray. <laughs> we gotta so pray. Yeah, let's get it. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this moment in time. We thank you for this good brother, Deja Ashwood, and all the goodness that he's doing out here in the universe. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, just doing your work. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for just allowing us to come together. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and just speak 
about his new project, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and just speak about all that he's doing, Lord Jesus, and just celebrate him, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We just pray and ask that you just continue blessing us, loving us, guiding us, lifting us up, shining a light down on us, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for just allowing us to wake up to see another day, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and just breathe our breath in, breathe in this air, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for life, love, happiness, positivity, all of the little things that we may overlook, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, you know our heart. Lord Jesus, we just want to give you all the victory, all the glory, all the love, all the praise. And we pray and ask that pressure continues to do well and then just supersedes and exceeds all expectations, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. And only you know the glory that it, you're going to provide for, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's get it. Let's get right, it. Yes, That's sir. Yes, sir. Uh, this, this is looking familiar. We've been here before. <laughs> we be back, and it's so good to be back for something that's you know that's really great to introduce to the you know the world uh, yeah. of acting and filmmaking. So I'm just I'm excited. I'm excited to have you a part of the project as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm honored, brother. I'm so honored. I'm happy to just even just put my eyes on it, and I, I love the fact like it's almost like you meticulously picked or chose all of the actors because everyone did their job did they think it was in a bag it was in a bag yeah i definitely actually when i wrote you know the the piece in a series i had actors in mind like yourself that i was hoping that hopefully when i call their number that they come and Damn. for the most part everybody did yeah we appreciate that man now you know i like the humanized conversation we didn't humanize it two times before, so we ain't gonna dive into who De Jure is and all that because we we should know. And if you don't know, you got two episodes to go back and replay and check this brother out because he's doing it. But we definitely gonna dive into some other things he's doing as well. But yeah. I want to talk about how this show, this series, transcended from social media. Let's talk yeah. about that, man. That's where it started, like, brother. How how was that transition? How did that work? Like, what was the reception? when you put it out on Instagram and all these platforms and up until now on Tubi, about to be on CW, about to be on Amazon, we speaking it into existence, Netflix, Max, all that. Like, what was that transition like? And what was that process? Man, you know, so when I first thought of the idea, I said, I want to create something that when people see it, they feel like it shouldn't be on Instagram. It shouldn't be on social media. It should be on a higher platform. And, and, I, and I said, what does that look like? So I, I, I started to write and I started to think of who could I put in to start it off. And of course, I thought of Lakita Renee Booker, phenomenal actress. She's For sure. Wonderful. And I said, you know, we could be the dynamic duel. So I wanted to start. I wanted to start right there. And then I had my likes of other people that I would have in the series. Um, and I said, you know what? I just want to start. I know the, the attention span of social media is short. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let's do something that's like one and a half, two minutes long. And what we're going to do is we're going to do eight episodes and we're going to drop it every week. We're going to leave them with a little teaser, you know, and a cliffhanger in their mouth. So they're going to want more and salivate. So I ran this for eight weeks, basically for two months. And I made it interactive. I will put like three or four questions. After I would drop and say, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? You think what happened? And people just started chime in, chime in. And, um, Literally, each uh, episode was getting several views, so it was a beautiful thing. You know, it was. It, I mean, the views was like two thousand, three thousand per view. Yeah. And I said, I, right, I want to be able to get at least ten thousand views for the whole entire series. If we could do that, I think it'll take off and go somewhere. And it did. It did just that. Absolutely, man. And you have a lot of the people that were in the original in this new one, correct? And then plus, like, you got like thirty cast members in this one, right? Yeah. About thirty. Yeah. I got a total of 35 cast members and the crazy part was that i kept putting it out it kept being shared then eventually distribution hit me up actually after the third episode <laughs> came to me and said hey they thought they thought that it was a trailer you know they thought yeah. they was like yeah i like your trailer yeah and i was like it's not a trailer it's actually a mini series you know i called it a micro mini series right because technically anything that's under three is is micro and nope. many meaning that it's under 13 episodes. So a micro mini series, right? Yeah. And they, they, they said they love the quality, they love the acting, and it was like, hey, we want you to do this, but on a larger scale. And dope, man. Dope, dope, dope. So, all right, for you, so like you have all these actors, man, and you did hold auditions, am I correct? I did. Yeah, I did. So I, 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 had, I would say 
probably about 75 to 80% was they were handpicked. They mm -hmm. were handpicked. People that I worked with before, I knew they worked ethic. I knew their integrity. Yeah. It was going to be easy peasy. And then I came up with some other characters and I held so for the other like 15%, 20%, I held casting calls and that went well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could tell, man, the chemistry is great, you know, yeah. and you pick them well. The chemistry is great. And that matters. Like so many people don't understand what it looks like to be on a set. And the yeah. vibe and the, it's negative and it, the energy's all messed up. Like none of that. And I mean, you run a tight ship anyway. You shoot quickly. Yeah. You get your shots in. But the thing about I love the thing that I love about all of your sets, man. Everybody's professional. Everybody's yeah. just happy to be there. Everybody wants to work. Nobody comes with an ego. You always say, "Check your ego at the door." You know Check what I mean? Out. And yeah, and and they do. And we do, right? We come in there. Yeah. We work, man. Everybody's showing love, and it's just a good chemistry. Like. It, it just feels good being on your set. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and part and part of that is really starting at the crux of it, like starting at the the apex of it all is like making sure that I'm organized and making sure that I treat people with kindness and respect and letting that culture bleed through the whole entire series. And when I brought people aboard, I brought them into the culture of like let's let's respect. I never let one actor direct another actor. I say you leave that to me. You come yeah. in, you craft you don't correct anybody because that's something that i got a pet peeve about you come yeah. and just do your thing i make sure that we run when we say we're gonna run at a certain time we started we're not starting late we started early and we ended on time and i made that a consistent thing throughout and everybody really enjoyed the experience and the funny thing about it is that when you're managing 35 actors to be able to say at the end of the day i had no issues it's crazy yeah <laughs> absolutely man Cause you know how I can be, so yeah, it's it's a wonderful bunch, and it shows though. It really shows, like the yeah. chemistry, and I just can't say any more about it. It really just shows. You can feel it when you're watching the show. I've had other people say, like, man, the, the acting is really good, the writing is really good. It's just a cohesive project. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, yeah. you can, go ahead. And one, the one thing that I'll add to that is that, uh, you know, selflessly, a lot of times. Um, there's a lot of actors that I want to work with, but because they're so busy, I'm so busy, I don't get a chance. So, you know, like yourself, you know, um, you know, I'm a, all, I've always been a fan of your work. And so creating this project gave me an excuse to basically, you know, have you on a set, but also be able to to be around. And even though we didn't have any scenes together, I would still be able to, to have you on a set. Yes. So that's my little selfless, you know, <laughs> selfish plug of getting people that I admire to be on my set. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the feeling is mutual, brother. You know what I'm saying? Every time you call, I'm like, hell yeah, I'm coming. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm, I'm going to make a way. I just been, I know there's been a couple times in the past I couldn't. And you're like, man, what's going on? But I, I, trust me, when I can't, I can't. When yeah. I can, sometimes even if I can't, I'm going to make that way. But there's certain times I just can't. But, you know, I'm there, man. And I really appreciate you reaching out to me um, for this. Like, I put it out there. I didn't have to audition. The brother reached out said, I need right. you. You know, but that, but, but we got history though. You know, we put in work together. We've been in other yeah. projects and stuff like that. So you, you know what you're getting when I, when I show up, you know, I'm about business. I'm going to do my thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so no, nah, I really appreciate that. So let's talk about distribution though. So distribution hit you up. Yeah. What was that process like for people who want to get distribution? Cause you got other filmmakers out here that's just sitting on projects and don't really know how to put it out there or get somebody to back it. Cause I know there's, self-upload places you can upload and all that but you really want somebody to get behind it help you push yeah. what what does that look like yeah and you know at the start of it make good content really really make an effort to make good content take your time with the writing take your time with the acting take your time with the concept right take your time make good content and if you do that and you be dope this is my thing if you be dope if you're dope, people are going to come to you. They're going to come looking for you because you you become an undeniable, right? You know, a lot of times, you know, and I, I'll take a page out of Nick Cannon's book where Nick Cannon is like, you know, networking. He don't like to do a lot of networking because he's like, you know, a lot of times, you, you know, you, you know, you're kissing, you know, this, that, and the third. Yeah. So he's like, but if you are really good at what you do, then people are going to come to you. So if you are a filmmaker, make good content. Put it out there. Use use your social media platform because you can cover so many you know bases. Connect mm -hmm. with, have your actors share the project, and yeah. eventually somebody's gonna see good work. Because if it's good work, it's good work. People gonna share it. Yeah, and yeah. it's all about it's all about your marketing as well. You know, what I'm saying pushing it out there, getting through different platforms uh, as far as like Twitter, you know, X, uh, um, Instagram, Facebook. And when you share it enough, somebody's gonna see it. Yep. 
and they're going to holler at you. And so what that whole process was like as far as distribution, it was, you know, they came to me and they said, hey, listen, you know, this is who we're who we have partnership with. It was about 10 different, you know, um, platforms like BET Plus, you know, Hulu, and the list goes on to be so on and so forth. Right. The funny thing about it is that CW initially wasn't a part of that package. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, but you know, I put the product together. They didn't give me a, a deadline or anything like that, but I gave myself a deadline. I said, okay, by the end of this, you know, quarter, I'm going to have all the information in, sent all the information in. And then at, at that point you just wait. And then they, they basically push it for you. They out there pitching for you. Yeah. They out there pitching for you. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Oh, this is, it's so beautiful, brother. I can't wait. I can't wait for season two, man. <laughs> Yeah, because it's because it's like now, you know, when when a network like CW picks it up, you know, it lets you know like you got something. Yeah, for know, sure. And they want to see more. One thing that threaded through the entire thing was definitely the quality. It, you mm. know, that's what a lot of people mentioned, even my distribution when they received it, they said, "Hey, it looks good, brother." Like, really, it, really, it really does. I've had people hit me. I'm telling you, because you yeah. know, you know what you get. I ain't gonna say there's all bad stuff on Tubi. I ain't even gonna say bad, but less quality, yeah. lower quality, right? Uh, sure. Productions. It's a lot of that on there. So when people think of that, that's what, you know, think of Tubi, they think of that. And I've had people come back and be like, brother, I thought, you know, you sent this, it was on Tubi. Man, I checked it out. Man, that thing is legit. It's official. Like the quality is legit. The qu- it looks yeah. good. Yes. Sound, lighting, everything, brother, to the T. And I know you're a stickler about that sound. Sound to the T, yeah. Fighting to the T, yeah. Shot, shot, man. The shot selection to the T. Yeah. Yeah. It all I, matters. You know I really, I really got my bag with lighting. I really got my bag with cinematography. You know, and I really got my bag with the writing as far as like just the cleverness. So as you watch the series, you know, and you watch it over again, you're going to start to see different things and pick it apart of how clever. It's not just you know a straight line story. It's, right. It's, it's, it's it's pieced in a certain way. There's a rhythm and there's a uh, there is a, a, a fingerprint that I have and a signature that I continuously run throughout the series. Absolutely. So let's talk about the series, man. Give us the plot. Like, what what is it all about? I got a couple yeah. of clips we're gonna play so we can everybody can get the gist of what's going on here. But yeah, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. So pressure now is spelled interesting enough. It's spelled P R E S S U R X. Now, if you notice anything in a medical industry, RX stands for prescription. So Mm -hmm. this is something that has to deal with basically the medical industry versus artificial intelligence. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the sci-fi aspect of it. And it's about an out of work uh, accountant who gets out of jail and he comes across, you know, he's having trouble finding a job and he comes across this lifespan device that's able to calculate life. But in that he finds himself in, uh, at, at war and puts his life in jeopardy with the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical industry mm, okay and so now for you because you don't find a lot of let me hold on should i say this yeah i'm gonna say this i don't know of too many people that look like us that are jumping into sci-fi right right what what intrigued you to do that yeah you know what i didn't want to do the typical bang bang shooting up we from the hood you know i done seen it or you know the man cheating on a girl girl she yeah on I didn't want to do that. Those those stories we all know comes easy. So what else could we possibly do? And I'm a thinker, you know, I like to use my mind and I like to always use the what if. What if what if this? And and I one day I came up with this idea. It's like, what if there was a, a way that you could tell when somebody was gonna live or so how long somebody was gonna live or when exactly right. they were gonna die? And then I came up with the whole idea of pressure. Um and I kind of tossed the idea back and forth with Lakita Renee Booker, uh, who was also a phenomenal actress. And we kind of, you know, she she definitely, she was a very integral part in developing the whole idea of was pressure. Good. Yeah. And, and, and there we have it. And so I said, you know, I want to dive into sci-fi. I love the whole idea of it's science, it's fiction. And yeah. when it's science fiction, it can be whatever you want. In this world, this is what it looks like. Yeah. You know what I like about sci-fi? It's unpredictable. Yeah. It takes the viewer on a journey. It keeps them on the edge of their seat because they don't know what's going to happen because it's sci-fi. Anything's possible with sci-fi. But when you got a hood classic, you know what's going to happen. What's going to (laughs) happen? 
<laughs> you know exactly what's gonna happen. It's the same story over and over, or somebody cheating. It's this. It's the same story. No yeah. shade on all that because it all has value. It's, it's somebody's sure. creativity, so I'm never gonna dish on anybody's creativity. But all I'm saying is, I love the fact that you were able to step outside of that. You know what I'm saying, and and give us something different, and something we still can connect with, and just take us on a journey, be entertaining and of high quality and value. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not I, just saying that because I'm in it, brother. I'm I'm saying it as a fan. Like you know, I've always yeah. been a fan of your work. Period. Regardless if I'm in it or not, I'm still promoting you, always. You know. Yeah. What I mean? So yeah, definitely, man. I, I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. I want to jump into the first clip. This is a clip. This is probably going to show everybody kind of what the device does. Yeah. In this, this is when you were in the in the motel. You yeah. know, I'll let them. I'll let them watch it. But let's yeah. check this out, yeah. person I could think of that would be willing to take a chance and, and pay for that information. I'll figure something out. Oh. What's that? stuff. Yeah. 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 So ladies and gentlemen, that was that was Jamie and Kennedy, right? Yeah, that's Jamie and Kennedy. Yeah. Jamie and Kennedy, they're a couple and they're on the run. Somebody wants that 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 device. You guys yeah. are trying to sell it off. Let me ask you this, something about the film, right? You yeah. as Jamie. Now you got people chasing you. You're risking your life to try to sell this device. Was it because of dreams of getting rich or dreams of just providing for your woman, getting back on your feet, providing for your family, starting a life moving forward? Yeah, the latter. You know, he's been, he, you know, so he went to jail and I won't give all those details, but you, you know, once you see the series, you'll see why. But he ended up, you know, was being incarcerated. And when he came out, it was difficult for him to find a job. So he ended up basically, you know, you know, share an apartment with his girl. And um, he just wanna be, he wanna feel like he's a full man and get on his feet. And um, this opportunity comes to him, we're getting his lifespan device, and he sees a way out, you know? And so it's, it's not so much of him getting rich, it's just that he just, he feels that this device is gonna help him be, a, be the man that he wanna be, provide and, 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 and have his own. And and he's willing to put himself in all types of situations because this device represents him being able to have control of his life again. Yeah. Deja the actor, right? Yeah. Deja the actor. Were there any challenges for you with this role that you wrote? Yeah, you know, um, some of it I connected to because, you know, I do have a degree in, in accounting. And um, 
you know, I've, I've never really been put in a situation where I struggled with being able to find a job. I've always been able to find a job. You know, <laughs> and I wanted to kind of tap into what it, what it, what would it feel like if I um, was at a point where I couldn't get a job and I couldn't, you know, I've, I've always been controlled for the most part of my, you know, my life, my structure. And so I really wanted to tap into feeling that vulnerability of, you know, not being in control. You know, because for the most part, I tend to be in control of my life. And so I wanted to tap into what that is like. And I know a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this being one of the larger productions that you've created, because I know you've done a lot of short, short, shorts and minis and stuff like that. Did you come across any obstacles or any uphill battles, struggles with this with this production? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, before this, this is actually my first series that is of this magnitude, this length, because... I'm the king of short films and pretty much before this, you know, I think the, the largest, you know, film that I wrote was about 10 minutes long, 10 pages. And so when I was slated with the, the challenge of creating something that had to be at least 20, you know, 22 to 25 in, uh, minutes in length, it was a challenge because I was thinking like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to write this. And then I got to write, you know, five or six episodes. Right. I said, this is a lot. It's like writing a feature twice. And, and so I really had to reprogram myself to think long way. And this is what I did. I had a I had an actor um, named Eric Crows. He's also with Jana, a, a good friend of mine. You know, and he said something to me a long time ago. He said, he said, a feature film or series is nothing more than a string of short films. So I had already wrote enough films that I probably got about eight feature films already. And so, right. You know what I'm saying? And so instead of me trying to conquer the elephant, you know how they say, how do you eat an elephant? Bite by bite. And that's what I did. Dope, dope, man. Yeah, I, I I could not even imagine, brother, to just break down characters and then you have to create a story and a life for each yeah. one. Yeah. But almost 30 minutes an episode, I mean, kudos to you, brother. Like. Yeah. It's yeah. a gift. It's a skill. It's an art. And you you did it. You're doing it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I, then the other magic to that is that when you create these characters, they're in your head. And you have an <laughs> idea. And then when you cast them and they make it better than what you wrote, you're like, man, this is, this is awesome. This is great. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I see it. I had this vision. And then when you guys put your, put your stank on it, it's even better. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it was... So that was that was very therapeutic for me to see my work come from you know uh, mine to, to to ink to ink to pen and then yeah I bring it to life. That that's the ultimate pleasure right there. Now when you come up with all these characters, do you create the entire story for that one character before you start putting the story together? Like when you say, okay, I got Jamie. Who's Jamie? What is Jamie about? What has he been through? All that. Like, do you? cast all that onto like a vision board and create his life and yeah. then move on to Kennedy and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, how does that work? Yeah. So I'm real big on story, right? And before I create a character, there's nothing without story. So I'm always story, character, and then the dialogue. Okay. Right. And so at the end of the day, because sometimes you can have, you know, you, you could come up with this character, but you know, what are they, what are they doing? What are they existing? And it's just a, you know, it's just a, a good character, but they exist in nowhere. So okay. the meat and potatoes for me is always a story. Come up with a good cons, a, a good idea with a nice twist, you know, now give it meat, which is the story. And now you drop these characters in it that push the story. Okay. Yeah. So All that's right. what I'm, that's what I'm always, I'm always start with a good story. Writing for me doesn't begin unless I have a good idea, which launch pads into a good twist and then a story. Okay. And then as you come up with a character, drop them in this situation or scenario, that kind of sparks more creativity of, okay, how is this, how is this uh, life going to progress? Or how is these situations for this person going to progress? Is, is that correct? Yeah. And as you go, you know, once you, once you start, once you get the train pushing, it just it just goes. It's a track. Boom, boom, boom. So what happens is that now you put you got the story and you have Jamie and Kennedy, mm -hmm. right? And then what happens is that now they have interactions and now you create this other character because you're trying to get to A. So I always think of like, okay, I'm at A and I want to get to Z, but now you know, in the pursuit of getting to Z, I interact with another character, C, mm -hmm. D, E, F. You know what I'm saying? And 
all that is to get me to Z, but I got to go through these things. Or some of them helped me along the way. Some of them hurt me along the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to write this? You know, realistically, it took me about a month to write it, to write five episodes because, and the longest was like the first episode, right? And so like, let's say the first episode took me about a week and a half, but after I got it cooking, once you, once you start the train on a track, everything else after that becomes oh, easy, okay. <laughs> you know, I start going. So it was really just getting started. And, it, and it's like when I first start shooting, usually the first scene that I shoot, it goes slow after that. Boom! It's something about just starting it up. Yeah, it's got. Kind of, I, I would think it's kind of like songwriting. You know, once you get the song going, then it's almost like you're just talking. Man, because then the thought, the story's coming, the thoughts are coming, and it's just flowing, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. That's what it is. And you know, this is this is a little something for for people that are out there that's trying to transition. Listen, everybody has a story to be told, and I will say this: you can have a good story, but it could be told poorly. Or you could have an okay story and it could, you could tell it really good. But if you got a good story and you tell it really well, you're going to have a hit. And so execution is everything. How yeah. you execute that story, that's everything. Absolutely. What, what, what did the crew look like? How big of a crew did you need to, to pull this off? Yeah, you know, my crew was a crew of, I would say, at, at most about five. So I was the DP, right? And then I had uh, my boy KT, who was... Uh, was the a camera and then i would have sometimes um adriana and rob do the b camera right okay. and this is when i was on this is when i'm on set and then rob sometimes it, most of the times he did sound uh and then i had then i had uh taj come in towards the end help me with the gimbal and then i also had Kara jackson who came in she also helped me with pa so whenever i'm not on camera right whenever i'm not on set I become camera A, and then I shift uh, KT to camera B. So a lot of things, when you watch this series, if you don't see me on camera, <laughs> right, on the screen, I'm behind the camera. You're behind the camera, yeah. You know, I was very hands-on, and I love it. I love I love seeing the whole thing. Look, there, there's something, this, this, this will never change, it will never get old. When I have an idea here, I write it down, I cast, I shoot it, I edit it, and I see it. That whole process right there never gets old for me. And for you filmmakers out there, you know what I'm talking about. To see seeing something go full 360. Yeah. It never gets old. From your mind to man. the TV screen, man. That's that's crazy, right? It never gets old. Yeah. I love I love I, I truly love that process. And I can do it over and over again because the whole idea, it, it psychs me out to like have something here. And you thinking about it, you're like, mm, what if? And then you start writing down and then you're like, oh, Eric could play this. This person could play this. Victoria could play this. Lakita could play this. Right. You start putting those things. And you're like, OK. And now it comes into fruition. And the biggest thing for me, man, when we had that table read, mm. was it was it was that table read lit? That yeah. it was lit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. The energy was there. You could feel it was going to be something special, man. Because that's that's when you see when you see like oh this is real like I'm seeing yeah. like everybody here and then we all reading in character it was just a phenomenal thing it was it was it was great yeah absolutely man can you uh, let me ask you this do you care to talk about some of the signature things you do as a director yeah and yeah, so so like with this particular series um I got a couple of things and three things is that I was very intentional about the lighting and so um. I had basically uh, five, six, six light codes in it, you know, and so the different lighters that I used was like purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, right? And so, and each of those colors, I won't get that part away, but each of those colors means something. So when you watch the series again, pay attention to those colors because they show up, you know, they basically dictate emotions or what's going on. So that's one thing. I use color theory. The second thing what I did was I use interesting shots. So you'll have some shots where I'm shooting from like, you know, I call it a peekaboo shot where I'm shooting from in between something, you yeah. know? So I would do something like that. Or I would have it where um, 
you know, I'm kind of shooting from just a just a weird angle, a different angle that you would normally see. So I did that. I did some funny things with that. And then last but not least, I have something what I call basically a, an audible transition. I call it an audible transition where I would have a scene and before someone is finishing a sentence, the sentence is finished in the next scene with someone else. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so I did that a lot, and that's 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 definitely three signatures of pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I got another scene, and it kind of plays to the what you were talking about with the color theory. Um, yes, goons. They got somebody hostage. They, you know, and and it just shows like how heightened this this. It, it's just crazy. He, yeah, yeah. Jamie's out there risking his life, man, for a machine. So, <laughs> and this this scene is gonna show you just how serious that is. So let's yeah. jump to that, and we'll come back. And we'll talk about it. Let's see where we at. Here we go. Here we go. We don't want to hurt you. We just need to know where Jamie is. We're going to roll the duct tape now, but if you scream, she's going to kill you. Got that? I don't know who you're talking about. Wrong answer. You know who you are. Please, I swear, I don't know it, Jamie. I just started working at the store. Look, Kennedy, we're at your place. Jamie has something about us. My name is Brenda. Please, just check my ID. It's in my purse. Fuck. Why'd you do that? I know when a woman's about to scream. Now what? I'm not going to Dr. Bain empty handed. And right now we're running out of options. Man, man. Official, brother. Yeah, yeah. Official. Playing with lighting on that and doing different camera angles. And directing that scene, that's that's definitely one of my favorite scenes of the of the piece. It's probably one of the uh one of the first scenes that I edited too, because I was so excited to kind of <laughs> and I and I love that because I played a lot with um, you know, the transition of of darkness of when it would fade out, going to another shot, then going yep. to another shot, you know, playing with that and playing with light theory and that color theory with that as well. So that was that was such a good a good scene to um to shoot and we had everybody on deck for that you know as we were shooting that it was it was really cool it was really cool yeah let's talk about um you said you you edited so what does it do what does it do for you when you edit out of order do yeah you, is there a purpose for that yeah sometimes because sometimes for me um i need to see the ending to know how to do the beginning it's mm-hmm. kind of weird like that and so sometimes i'll edit out of order um, because because one scene may give me energy, um, or I may also need one scene that I'm actually gonna you know flash back to or flash forward to something like that. So sometimes I'll edit it out of order, but it's just it's just a feeling. And um, you know a lot of editors know this is that you edit when you when you when you get to a point where you're really good at editing, it's it's like a, a engineer. You you start to work by feeling, you okay. know, and 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 so I'll go. This scene is calling for me to edit it. I need to edit this so that way I know what to do with everything else. Got you. Okay. I'm about to test your memory right now. I want you to get a crew some love, man. The cast and the crew some love. Shout out some names, some characters. You know, I'm going to play this little poster right here. You know, so yeah. everybody can kind of get a, a, a yeah. eye on who, who's who. But, you know, throw some throw some names out there, man. Show some love. Yeah. So of course, I got to shout out my co-star, Lakita Renee Booker, did a phenomenal job. Then I'm going to shout out Taj, 
Now, Roger Jenkins, he did his thing. He plays the antagonist. I got a shout out also Scott Oakley. I got a shout out Vanessa uh, Defont. I also got a shout out uh, KT, you know, Megason. I also got a, I got a shout out Eric uh, um, uh, Eric Hawkins. You, you know, <laughs> doing this doing this thing. Um, I got a shout out Portia Q, uh, Tiffany Artist. She flew all the way. Tiffany J Artist flew all the way from uh, Detroit to be in this piece. You know what I'm saying? And then also a uh, Portia Carroll who flew all the way from LA to be in in this piece. So, wow. I mean, also Rayanne, uh, uh, Rayanne Jamil. He flew all the way from LA as well. Um, Jennifer Gaines, Laura uh, uh, Sani, um, Rob uh, Moran. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I got uh, Patrick Hawkins. Uh, I got also I got Andre Williams, Mark Williams, uh, Triana Moore. Come on, let's go. Nicole <laughs> Crump, uh, Mixon, Kentrell Wright. You know what I'm saying? The list goes on and on and on. And then, of course, the lady who played my mom, Tina uh, Witherby, she did her thing. I had to have her in the show. You know, so listen. And then, of course, Latoya Simone. It's too many names. It's too crazy. And then also, I had um, a good friend of mine, the actress named Kirsten in Maryland. She's out of New York. So she was a part of my New York crew when I shot in New York. My boy, Jimmy E. Britt. He helped me with camera in New York, and also uh, Saladin, my boy, uh, and from Harlem. He helped me out with camera as well. So I have my New York crew, you know, on it. Allie Bill, Elo Coke. I mean, and then also Pamela uh, Collins, who played my news reporter. Man, the list goes on and on and on. So many people. It's, it's just, it was great. It was just great. Yeah. We were missing. But if I didn't give a shout out to Adriana Posey, Adriana Marie. She yeah. played my uh, my scripty and my PA. She was phenomenal. Oh yeah. Instrument. And this whole production as well. Absolutely. Got to shout out. Man. Yeah. Shout out to all the cast and the crew, man. Love working with everybody that I work with. And I pretty much know a lot of them anyway, just from our crew. You know, how, you know. So, yeah, man. It, it, it was, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing that you yeah. got going, brother. And I'm just really honored to be a part of it. Like I said, it's probably my, my fourth time saying it. But I really mean that. And yeah. I can't wait for season two. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just don't yeah. kill me off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That's what a lot of people. And you know, uh, I'm actually taking you know all of July to write uh, to write that uh, season two, and then also I'm working on another series as well. So July is gonna be my writing month. I'm actually gonna go to a writers retreat and just cool out for like a week and just do nothing but writing. So I'm super excited because when you got that momentum, you kind of wanna wanna keep yeah. it there because sure. based on different moments of your life different writing will come out you know if i start sure. writing today it's gonna be different from if i start writing two weeks from now for sure for yeah. sure and man we've been just we've been getting so much love it dropped on the first of july and i mean every, you know predominantly the entire cast have been doing their thing as far as um promoting it and and putting it out and having their families and their friends continuously watch it and um it's it, i mean i've been receiving inboxes dm yeah. text messages emails of just you know the 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 amount of support and the reposting of everything so i my, my hat goes over and i salute everyone who's supporting pressure the series season one on tubi uh soon to come to cw and amazon and it's actually going to be a slew of other platforms that's going to be on but those are the main three yeah yeah streaming right now links are below no excuses go show that love Brother, I'm getting a lot of people hitting me. So if I'm getting a lot of people hitting me, I know you getting flooded. So man, blessing. It's a blessing, brother. It's a blessing. And just thank you to everybody who's supporting it, putting their eyes on it, sharing it, re you know, sharing it to their family, their friends, resharing it on Instagram, whatever platforms, man. Just keep giving it burn. Brother, I go to sleep to it. I wake up to it because it just repeats. And yeah. I'm I'm giving it that burn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What I was in Florida this past week and I had my family down there, my old we watching it. We just put it on this too and we just was watching it over and over and over again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It up. Um and it was a really good thing. And then people, you know, it was it was dope to have people tap in like, hey, uh I, I just watched it the entire thing. It wasn't what I expected. You know, it was it was, you know, it was very different. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And it hit say, um, for me it's it's a win win all around because for for me, a lot of people will tap in and be like, oh, I really like this character, or I couldn't stand this character, or this character like that. And I'm like, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, they did their job. <laughs> you weren't supposed to like them. Exactly. That's what that was the whole point. So, you know, my actors did a really good job, and it, and it really taps into me that I, I, 
I chose the right cast. Absolutely. So let me ask you this, and I don't want to move too far ahead and, and, and spoil the moment, but when do you think season two will be coming out, released, just moving forward to kind of string this along? Yeah. So, of course, you know, this first time around, it was it, it's what I say. There is a learning curve to the earning curve. And so um, I plan to basically go into production, I would say, probably uh, late August and probably, you know, finish around just a little bit after Thanksgiving, something like that. And then the goal is to have all of December so I can do my post-production. Okay. And then so have it submitted the end of this end of December or early January. Um, and so we will be looking at maybe like a late, um, a late a winter or early spring release. I'm gonna try to go for that late winter release. Yeah. So okay. like look at, looking at probably like the ending of the third, the first quarter, or the beginning of the second quarter of 2025. Yeah. 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 Don't keep them waiting too long, brother. Keep them while they hooked it. You know what I'm saying? Locked in. Because you exactly. got them hooked. You exactly. got them hooked. You know? Yeah. And I'm going to keep exactly. pushing it, brother. I'm going to keep pushing it. But oh, I just yeah. can't wait. And then before it drop, of course, there's going to be like, we're going to have a premiere. Yeah. Um, and, you know, which is another thing, man. You know, we had the premiere that you came to, and we had that back in February. I always like Fish. to have it around my birthday. Shout out to February 27th. You know what I'm saying? Pisces gang. So, um, Pisces as well. So, yes, you know, I had it uh, February 24th for this year. And um, I expected to be about 50, you know, 60 people there. And we threw those numbers through the roof. It was, you know, it, 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 all the seats was filled. People were still standing. And so it was such a great turnout. I mean, bigger than I thought it was going to be. And everybody just really loved it. So that, that was dope. That was a good moment. That's what happens when you got people believing. Yeah. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yeah. It's a blessing, brother. Self-analysis yeah. before we get up out of here. Yes, you yes. Always do it. What's one thing that you feel you could be doing more of or better to get you to where you're going? Yeah. And, you know, um, one thing that I feel like I could be doing more of is really just like, um, you know, being being a blessing to other people because I'm a firm believer of, um, you know, your my success is really dictated on how I can make somebody else successful. So I want to do more of that. I definitely want to do more of that. I'm real big on that. And um, what was the sec what was the second thing you said? I oh, just up? yeah, just you know, more of or better, doing something better to get yeah. you going. And um, you know, I'm gonna look at season one, and I'm going to as much as I like it, I'm gonna scrutinize it and all different, and I'm gonna be better. Like so, season two, mm -hmm. I want season two, and I'm gonna say season two will be uh, the product of when people see it, they gonna go, man, I like season one, but season two. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, I'm man. About story. I'm talking about acting. I'm talking about camera quality. I'm talking about, you know, color theory, everything, the whole production overall. I always said that I'm going, I want to create something that if it's not on Netflix, that people looking at, they saying, why this shit ain't on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Challenge yourself. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Challenge Step yourself. Yeah, man, brother, congratulations. I just want to say that. Congratulations, brother. Yeah, man, you, you, you yeah. do so much and you do it well. Uh, like I said, y'all, he's acting, writing, producing, cameraman, coach. Brother, you're doing reels. You do, man, what aren't you doing? Acting classes, like, listen, come listen, on, man. man. Living life like it's golden at the end of the day. Renaissance, man, right here. I want to use the goal is to use all the tools that I possess. Just use them. Got to use them, you know, because yeah. listen, God give you these tools and a way to say thank you is to use them and bless others with them. Come on. Come there on. it is. I, listen, I appreciate you having me a part of the show as always. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for saying yes. When I called you, thank you for saying yes and for being there. I appreciate you, you know, for that. Oh, Take for that. sure, brother. You got it every time. You know that. Absolutely. Everybody. Listen, pressure streaming right now on Tubi. It's for free. Link down below. Go check it out. It's a five-part series, about 25 minutes an episode. I mean, you watch sitcoms without the without the commercials, the sitcom is about 23 to 25 minutes. Back. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> and you will not be. Trust me. Trust me. When I say it's different, 
Yes, it's different. Yeah, you will not be disappointed. Yeah, you will not be disappointed. Quality wise, acting wise, concept, plot. I'm telling you, cinematography, all the tricks he does with his writing and his filming and the shot. I'm telling you, man, it's just different. And yeah. I'm not being biased. I'm not Come being on. biased. I've always been a fan, not being biased. So y'all tap in and just show the love. And even even if you're not interested, how about you just support somebody? Hmm? We talk about making other people better. Give it back, right? Just support. You might not like it. Or you, I won't even say you might not like it. Because I refuse to say you you won't like it. But oh, sci-fi may not be your thing. But you yeah. know somebody who's a little techie or a trekkie who loves sci-fi that would tap love in. it. Tap in. Share it. It costs you nothing. <laughs> costs you nothing. Also, listen, if you're an actor, an actress, Dejour has acting classes. Tap in. His his handle's right there. You can hit him in a DM. He does reels. He does reels. If you do not have film, if you've never, never been in a production and you need something to showcase your skills and your talent, tap in. Yes, he tap does in. Reels. And one thing about the classes too, one way, if you see my production and you want to be a part of it, one way of being part of it is definitely joining my class. So I, I teach an on-camera class on Wednesdays, uh, Saturdays, and Sundays. So you could reach out to me, but that's one of the things, because if you in what I call the barbershop, and you in my barbershop, eventually <laughs> get a cut. Exactly. There you go. There you go. And you're still doing headshots and all that too, right? Yeah, I still do headshots. I still do demo reels for Come actors that you know, new footage and all that. So yeah, you, you tap into the digital universe and you'll find out everything else that I do. Yeah. There you go. I'm telling you all in one, one stop shop, Dejour Ashwood. Ladies and gentlemen, man, thank you guys for tuning in. This is where I'm at every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, kicking it with someone cool like Dejour Ashwood every single night. We're doing it. All right. Like I said, links are below. I can't say it enough. Tap in, give it a shot. That's all we ask. Put your eyes on it. That's all we ask. Nothing more, nothing less. Put your eyes on it. And maybe just hit the like and the share and, and save it to your watch list on Tubi. But you know, <laughs> that's all we ask. But oh, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, and I'm playing it with Cool Card. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, but listen, we're out of here. But don't go nowhere because I got another clip from the series. Just to kind of reel y'all in, you know? We throwing bait out there. Right? Oh, oh. <laughs> made out there. Hey, brother, I appreciate you coming on the platform, man. I appreciate you for all that you do. Keep being a blessing, brother. God is yeah. going to keep his hand on you, blessing you. Keep praying for you, man. Always praying for you, for sure. I appreciate you, man. It's, listen, it's a luxury to be on the show. Thank you so much for having me again. I appreciate it. No doubt. It's an honor. We out of here, y'all. Peace and love. Stick around for this new clip. And then we out. Till next time. Let's go. Boom. Oh. So when we was up in New York, I spoke to my sister friend, Rachel. Mm -hmm. She gave me some really good advice about a consultant rate. Hmm. She said I could base it on their insurance policy. Really? Let me get those clippers. Everything in that fucking register too. Please, don't shoot. I have kids, okay? Here, take whatever you want. Fruit extract seed oil. Babe, get that. What? Hey, man, hey, you, you don't gotta do this. The fuck is you? Look, just take the clippers and leave. Jamie, what are you doing? Hey, look, if you leave now, cops won't catch you. The device didn't go off when you grabbed me. The device knew I wasn't planning on hurting you.